Hey guys, and welcome back to another boss guide for Vanilla World of Warcraft. This week, we'll be going over the fifth boss of AQ40, featuring the Twin Emperors. The Twin Emps are unique in that they share abilities while having unique ones of their own. Heal Brother is the first of these shared abilities they will cast on each other if they are too close. It heals for 30,000 health per tick, and because of this, it's important that they are kept separated during the entire fight. Twin Teleport is another shared ability where every 30 to 40 seconds, the Twin Imps will teleport and switch locations, resulting in a complete aggro wipe. After the teleport happens, the closest player to Vecalor and Vecnalash will receive a large amount of threat, which is why it's important that the warrior tanks always receive this. Melee DPS should rotate to the opposite side of the room when there is about 5 seconds left to the next teleport to prevent any mistakes from happening. The Twin Imps share a combined health pool, which means that damaging one will damage the other, allowing them to die at the same time. Finally, keep in mind that your raid has 15 minutes to defeat the Twin Imps before they berserk, which will heavily increase their damage, leading to a raid wipe shortly afterward. Moving on to unique abilities, Unbalancing Strike is a powerful melee attack that Vagnalash will use on his target that deals high damage along with placing a temporary debuff that lowers the player's defense by 100 and increases their chance to be quickly hit. Uppercut is an ability that Vagnalash will use on a random player in his melee range that deals moderate damage while also knocking them back. Throughout the fight, Vagnalash will mutate the scarabs and scorpions around him that increase their size, health, and damage. It's highly important that your ranged DPS kill these as soon as possible. Keep in mind that these mobs have abilities of their own such as Virulent Poison or Pierce Armor, so make sure that your DPS players keep these adds locked down during the fight. Finally, Vagnalash is immune to all schools of magic except Holy, meaning that he will be the target for your melee DPS and hunters during the fight. Moving on to Vecklor, Shadow Bolt is his most dangerous ability that deals 3000 to 4000 damage. Also, this ability can be partially resisted with Shadow Resistance gear, which we will discuss later on. Arcane Burst is Vecklor's disruption ability that is only cast when players are in his melee range. Inflicting a high amount of damage, it also knocks the player away and slows their movement speed. Blizzard is a powerful area of effect spell that Vecklor will cast on players around him that deals roughly 1500 damage per tick, so make sure to move out of it as soon as possible. Throughout the fight, Vecklor will detonate bugs around him, causing them to explode after several seconds, dealing heavy fire damage to nearby players. Finally, keep in mind that Vecklor is immune to all physical attacks, and your caster DPS will be focused on him during the encounter. Before moving on, we need to discuss the unique feature of this fight that focuses on using Warlocks as tanks for Vecklor. Due to his anti-melee abilities that we discussed earlier, it's recommended to have a Warlock tank him due to her natural abilities that support this, such as Searing Pain for threat generation, Shadow Ward for absorbing shadow damage, and others like Demon Armor that increases their shadow resistance. However, your raid will need two Warlocks that have a gear set of at least 175 to 200 shadow resistance unbuffed, to mitigate the damage from Vecklor's Shadow Bolt. Lastly, Warlocks also receive help from their talent specializations, which we will dive into next. For maximum survivability, Warlocks can use the MD Ruined spec that focuses on the Master Demonologist talent, which grants the player 60 resistance to all schools of magic when their Fell Hunter is summoned and kept alive. However, with the knowledge and gear information that we know today, most Warlocks should be fine going SM Ruin or DS Ruin, provided that their guild situation can support this. Finally, make sure to stock up on Greater Shadow Protection Potions for this encounter if you're tanking Vecklor. If you need help in finding specific Shadow Resistance gear pieces or helpful consumables, then I recommend checking out a spreadsheet created by a great warlock known as Guybrush, which can be found in the description box down below. Raid positioning for this fight will be featured in three small segments, though keep in mind that this fight is dynamic and things could change for your raid. The initial pull of this encounter is one of the biggest things about this fight, as both Twin Ems need to be separated. Your primary Warlock tank will pull Vecklor to the leftmost torch, while your primary Warrior tank will have Vecnalash near the rightmost torch. 
Keep in mind that your guild can assign hunters to both tanks to pull or assist as needed. Assuming the pull went well, this is how your raid should be positioned before the first teleport. Ideally, the primary warlock tank should be located near the stairs and away from the scarabs, but it's mostly up to their judgement on where to stand as long as the boss doesn't move around too much. The primary warrior tank will have Vegnalash in his spot as the other warrior and warlock tanks wait for the teleport to happen. DPS warriors and rogues will start on Vegnalash on the right side and be prepared to move out at roughly 5 seconds before the teleport happens. Ranged DPS will be in the middle of the room and focusing on killing mutated bugs before switching to the bosses. Healers can place themselves on the stairs, but they may be forced to relocate depending on how the fight goes. Finally, to wrap things up, melee DPS should begin heading to the other side of the room when there is about 5 seconds to the next teleport. After the teleport happens, the tanks on both sides will switch as the warrior tank on the left side of the room grabs Vecnalash and tanks him where he stands. Meanwhile, the warlock tank on the right side of the room will spam Searing Pain to take Vecnalore off the warrior tank while the previous warlock waits for the next teleport. And then finally, ranged DPS and healers will remain in their general areas for the rest of the fight. For this week's Raid Perspective section, I'll be showing you guys both a tanking and DPS perspective for this fight. As the fight starts, I like to use Shadowburn or Deathcoil to quickly snap Vecklord to me with Dots as backup. Pulling him to the assigned location, I usually place myself in the sweet spot between Vecklord and my character so that he doesn't move or cast Arcane Burst. At this point, I use Toe Up to boost my spell power as I start spamming Searing Pain to boost my threat generation before the caster DPS start hitting him. If you look in front of me, the tank assigned to my side of the room is positioned so that he is closest to the boss and ready for the coming teleport. As the teleport arrives in the next several seconds, it's incredibly important that the tank receives the proxy threat and all melee DPS wait until it happens to prevent any mistakes that could lead to a raid wipe. At this point, I have to hope for the best and trust our healers and tank as it's my turn to wait, which gives me some time to help out with bugs or see how things are going on the other side of the room. With the teleport coming soon, I try to finish the scorpion off before Vecler arrives, as our melee DPS players begin rotating to the other side of the room. As the teleport arrives and the bosses switch locations, the tank receives the proxy threat as I start spamming Searing Pain to take aggro. Due to being close to the boss, Vecklor uses Arcane Burst which sends the warrior flying, but luckily I'm able to take over before he can move out of place. After a while, once you get used to the fight, you can start weaving in Shadow Bolts, however my advice is to stick with Searing Pain until AQ40 is on farm status. Switching to a DPS perspective, we're able to see much more of the entire fight as the Twin Imps prepare to switch locations again. Alliance players should also keep in mind that Paladins can use Concentration Aura to assist the Warlock tank, or Devotion Aura to assist the Warrior tank, so make sure to take advantage of that as well. Sidestepping out of the Blizzard, the melee DPS move in on Vecnalash as I turn around to help with the mutated bugs before focusing on Vecnalore. As your guild starts getting familiar with the content and gearing up for AQ40, Threat will become a problem in the future as there have been times where I've accidentally pulled aggro from a warlock tank. Because of this possibility, I recommend having a warlock tank switching some of their resistance gear with DPS gear later down the road to increase their threat generation. Overall though, as we head for the final stretch of the fight, I hope that by this point in the video everything is much more clear on what is required for this boss encounter. As always, thank you guys for watching. Your support drives the creation of these videos, and if you enjoy the content, feel free to like and subscribe. The feedback from the community has been amazing, and I appreciate your thoughts and comments. Join me next time for the ultimate boss of AQ40 featuring Cthune.